Hello, and welcome to The Next Great Car Era, a podcast by EV Tuners. I'm your host, Daniel Martin, and for today's episode, I had the pleasure of recording on-site with Ryan Bossery. Ryan is the owner of Rywire Motorsports Electronics and specializes in custom wire harnesses and engine bay parts for all types of sport compact cars. His passion for cars began with the Honda CRX, and he has been building and modifying cars since 1998. Over the years, Ryan has owned many different rides and helped build some of the most well-known cars on the scene today. After a thrilling tour through the shop where I saw multiple different projects, Ryan and I sat down to take a deep dive into what he is doing in the EV space and what we all have to look forward to from his shop. Enjoy. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with me today. Of course. Thanks, thanks so for much. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming out here. Awesome. So, um, you know, for those of out there that don't know, uh, maybe a little quick intro, a little background about who you are, Ryan. Yeah. So my name is Ryan Bossery, and I have a company called Rywire Motorsport Electronics. We do motorsport wiring. Uh, we build systems for race cars. We don't technically offer tuning, but we do. We collaborate with all the engine programmers and tuners. We build wiring looms for them. We build wiring looms for um, street cars, race cars, everything in between. We have private label stuff that we do for companies. So if you buy a wiring harness from a company, it might have been built by us, even though it might not say the brand oh, name. Oh, that's cool. So we do, that. that's the best because then it's repeat. You know, you can develop one thing and nerd out on it and then it's just repeatable business. Yeah. And that's that's like, that's the, that's the best for my business. Uh, but the passion is to do like the one-off race cars. So if I have time and, you know, somebody comes to me with a pro-level FD car, and we build, we we recommend electronics, and then we build it all out, and then we have these wiring harnesses that, you know, work great for the, for the guys all season long, and that's that's the goal. That's a lot of fun, um, but yeah, to pay the bills, it's like the the mass produced stuff, the right? re repeat, the repeat stuff, yeah. And it seems like just taking a quick loop around the shop, mm -hmm. um, there's like a lot of variety. Right? Yeah, there's right, some right. that are like super custom yeah. and then more repeatable. Yeah, exactly. Well. Yeah, so like uh, for the EV projects, when we we'll start talking about that, but there's going to be um, development of something that is that same uh, mentality of, of something that's easy, that, that can be repeated. And then there's other stuff that's uh, very custom and probably might not ever be repeated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So how did you get started in this? Um, doing engine swaps for friends and myself. And yourself. Yes. Okay. So I was in the CRXs. Not Hondas, not cars. I was in the CRXs. Just that one? This is where I like, yeah. <laughs> Just in the CRX. Nice. Uh, like you saw one I had back there. It's not Gorgeous. mine, but that's, yeah, that's like my favorite car of all time is the, the CRX. So I was super involved with that. And we had, there was a whole bunch of people that were into these CRXs and it was like the NorCal CRX club, right? Okay. So my, my friends were like running it and stuff. And then, um, we started doing swaps, yeah. right? And, you know, I did a swap for myself and, you know, I was even, even before I met the NorCal CRX guys, I was doing, you know, swaps in my dad's dirt driveway, you know, and. And then getting them running and then driving straight to, to LA to visit my family when I was living in NorCal, right? So it was like, wow, that actually worked. Like, yeah. and my dad's like, oh, you really got something there, right? <laughs> so I started selling these little tiny wiring looms um, on eBay. Okay. And they were just like, add VTEC, add uh, one little sensor. And then it turned into um, doing these swaps. And then it turned into, oh man, one of these models of the car is the, the dual point car with two injectors. You got to add a bunch of stuff uh -huh. to get it up to the level of, of doing a swap. Yeah. So they were like the hardest ones to work with. It was like, don't buy a DX cause you got to do all this wiring and, and, and wiring is like the devil and <laughs> nobody knows how to do it. And it's the great unknown. So I, I did a couple of like kind of, you know, tear down and rewrap wiring harnesses that worked okay. for the dual point to multi-point conversion. Then the challenge was I had a friend, her name was Jade and she was up in NorCal and she's like, I want to do this engine swap, but I want to do OBD one. So it's like the newer electronics and she had a DX. 
Ooh. So, and, and, and I was basically asked, Hey, when you come up and help me, can you maybe like pre make a wiring harness? I'm like, pre make a wiring harness for that. Right. Wow. So then I like did this whole pre made thing. And then I went up to her house and we did the whole swap in one day because it was her daily. So it's like, Hey, Oh, by the way, you know, we only have this weekend and I got to go drive to work on Monday. Right. Like, oh shit. Okay. So that's uh, a big day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it was. And I'm like, oh, and by the way, you're doing the swap. I'm not going to do the swap. Uh-huh. I'm going to watch you. And I'll, I'll do a couple. I'll do the wiring and stuff. Because she wanted to learn how to do it. And she did kind of know how to do it. Yeah. But um, wasn't well-versed like I was. So, you know, if there was a bolt that was too tight, because she was tiny, right? Mm -hmm. Like, crack it loose and tighten it back up. Okay. And then I built this wire loom, put it on the car, and then like I, I wired it in and I kind of soldered some things on. And it was kind of ugly, but it was like made to, like I could have shipped that to someone, right? Yeah. So then that kind of got me thinking, okay, this could be something I could do it this way. And then it just, one thing led to another and it turned into like a full-fledged business where I, I ended up just dropping out of college and said, forget it, I'm... I'm going to focus this direction yeah. and grow the business. You knew what you needed at yeah. that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you were also into cars before. Yeah, that yeah. That was your passion. I mean, CRXs were for my first passion, yeah. right? But then as you start getting into that, you go, oh, well, some other Hondas are cool. And oh, you know, uh, 911s are pretty cool. Oh, yeah, Ferraris are all right. Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'd settle for a you know, exotic or, a, you know, oh, su Supras are pretty you. cool. You know, so you just end up like, right? Yeah, you end yeah. up really kind of um, <clears throat> understanding what you like and then it's natural, it's our organic growth of, of, of being in the cars. So yeah. I was just really always interested in like, getting my hands dirty and like learning mechanical things. Okay. Uh, my dad was like a builder, house builder and he would like the handyman and all this stuff and i would help him i would mix concrete i would lay bricks i would do like yeah. stuff when i was a kid and that was always like made me feel really good to be able to finish a project like that mm -hmm. so um cars were i mean i was like i remember my dad doesn't didn't know anything about cars really yeah and i fixed he had like a mass airflow sensor issue on his toyota truck yeah and i literally like diagnosed it fixed it got it done for as cheap as possible, like, you know, eBayed the part. And he was just like blown away that like a, like a 15, 14, 15 year old kid could just like fix his truck and not know anything about like how it actually worked. And I That's just like awesome. figured it out. Right. So then he's like, you need to do that. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know? sense of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the accomplishment right there. Oh so. yeah. So were you always most interested in building or did you really like the car culture as much as much or motorsport? I like, I like the culture. I liked, cause I liked being around people that had similar interests. Um, I also like the motorsport stuff mm -hmm. and I got a little bit involved with that. Like I started racing, bringing my car to the track and doing track days, like a good amount. Sweet. And all my friends would like go and we would do that. But, but it really was like, man, I'm not that fast of a driver and I know I'm not that fast of a driver. So I need to kind of focus away from driving the car and maybe I'd be better, you know, as a mechanic on the car, you know, maybe doing data okay. or physical mechanic or whatever. So then that's when I started kind of to pivot a little bit and like focus more on that. And then the culture, like car meets and stuff were always really fun. Yeah. You know? And you get to like bounce ideas off people and see what people's builds are all about. Mm -hmm. um, so car shows, you know, car shows are car shows and they have that, that vibe that this Fast and the Furious thing really like, <laughs> like kind of kills that whole like, it kind of gives it cringiness a to little, it. Yeah, yeah. But, but like a Cars and Coffee style event is Money. really, really cool. That's yeah. like, that's great. Because you can show off your accomplishments, but then you can also meet a bunch of people. You can meet clients. You can do all these different things. So... I really like the cars and coffee style shows scene, if you will. And then I really like the technical, mechanical, like um, uh, problem solving, that part of it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. So EV stuff, mm -hmm. right? First first off, yeah. so you have a, a talk show with Big Mike. Mm -hmm. and it's right here on this couch. This very couch. Yeah. So if you guys haven't heard of that, then check it out. It's on YouTube, Car Talk with R&B. In episode number 24, okay. 
which was okay. like a year ago. Okay, it's a year ago. He okay, was asking 24. you, he's like, so, you know, what are you most excited about? Where do you think the industry is going? And you yeah, guys yeah, talked yeah. about that for a yep. while. It was a really okay. interesting conversation. Kind of remember that, yeah. One thing you said was, well, there's this EV thing I'm kind of interested in. Mm -hmm. And so now, a year later, yeah. you know, what is this EV thing? And it seems to be maybe sticking around? Yeah, I mean, it's still an EV thing. <laughs> like I was telling you out there, like when we were talking in the shop, like I still have only driven two EV cars. Yeah. Yeah, and both and one was a 911 and one was an S2000. Good so choices. <laughs> I don't know there's many people in the world that could say that, you know, yeah. that, that two EV cars I've ever driven are those <laughs> platforms. Not even a leaf. <laughs> right, like not even like, I mean, I've ridden in Teslas, I've ridden in Rev Rivians and they were super cool and super fast. And um, I definitely think that it's sticking around. Um, like I was telling you before, yeah. I don't feel like my S2000 was good enough for me, mm -hmm. meaning I didn't learn everything that needs to be learned and I want to give it another go. Yeah. Um, so then, and then it turned into well, if I'm going to give it another go, I may as well make like a kit because people seem to really been taken to the, the Civic hatchback build. Yeah. So I got another Civic hatchback and it's going to be a kit. So my goal is to take my white Civic EG and I'm going to make a kit. And then I have my EK hatch is going to be the all-wheel drive monster car chassis all cut up. Yeah, just like a nightmare on wheels, crazy <laughs> build, and then the EG is going to be like no cuts. We'll pass the banana test. Yeah, on the seat, right? Yeah, <laughs> pin that thing up. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it just stays. Yeah, it's going to be fast for sure. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to you know what? I'm gonna step step back just a little bit. When I was first starting to learn about EVs and the conversion space, yeah, uh, BC is is one of the main people that I talk to because I don't really have a lot of connections in the circle. I'm kind of like over here on the side. I don't know all these tuning shops that are starting to do EV conversions. Like I don't really know them. Sure. Um, so it's not like I can just make a phone call and be like, hey, you know, from whatever, whatever EV, uh, <laughs> let's chit chat for a bit. So BC had this idea that he was gonna do um, a Tesla powered 911 mm -hmm. and and i remember this i wanted to do a 911 but i was gonna i was like i want to do a parallel hybrid so that was going to be a gasoline engine with an electric motor fitted between the transmission and the engine and i still have this project it's just there's reasons why it's not even here at my shop but bc was like like, you know, hey, come over and help me with this car. So I come over there, you know, consultation to figure out how this wiring is going to work and stuff. And um, and then he's like, yeah, like, you should do one of these. And I'm like, a Tesla swapped car is too easy. That's what I said to him. Too easy. I'm looking for more of a challenge. And he's like, like oh, you assholes. Probably what he's thinking <laughs> in his head. You know, he's like, I really think that you should look into this before you um, quickly judge, right? Right. Because I'm thinking, oh, you just take the motor the motor has the inverter and the drive unit. It's all built in and you just throw some axles in it and hook up a battery and then the car just goes. Right. And that's all it was in my head. But there is so much to the strategy of everything. Hmm. The way that the cooling system works, the way that, that you know, you're, you're managing the torque and voltage means power. And there's so many ways to skin the cat. Yeah. That I didn't even understand. I didn't know that, right? So BC kind of said, Hey, before you do your this crazy parallel hybrid build that seems really incredible, but 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 very complicated, mm -hmm. maybe think about doing something a little bit more like tame. So I'm like, just something more simple that's full EV. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah, whatever, whatever. So then I thought about it more, and I realized, damn, I probably should like get my feet wet with something a little bit more simple. Um, and 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 yeah, it it was more simple maybe but still very 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 complicated yeah um and there's still a ton to learn to learn on it so that um, was the s2000 that was the s2000 yeah and um like right now i think i've rebuilt the car well not fully rebuild but like it's gone under the knife like four times now and it's so frustrating because it's like technology advances mm -hmm. and there was a point where i was like okay, I'm only going to build this car once. I'm going to do it right. 
the way I want. And then what it ends up turning into is, oh, I maybe made a mistake. Like that was the bad choice, right? Okay, let's revisit that later. And then I reconstruct that. And then, oh, AEM all of a sudden now has control over the drive with a circuit board replacement. That sounds way better because now I can control all these other things that I really wanted to do, right? Yeah. So then that system, like right now I'm actually buttoning that system up um, and it's going to be the way I want it very soon. Um, and, you know, there's, there, there's a, it's just, it's just growth, right? So yeah. it sucks because the, the car, the car gets put together and then it gets torn down, put together and torn down. So it's, like it's a lot of work that has a project car knows that while you're at it, that that's real. But you're also struggling with the fact that the this EV thing, the industry, the parts is changing crazy fast. Crazy fast. It's like two, two X. I don't, I, and I don't know much about it because I, like I said, I'm not really involved in all the circles of EV. Um, I know like, uh, <clears throat> now don't take offense to this. Okay. But my original thought behind these like cars that are like EV converted and stuff. Yeah. Is uh, that they're the like the white boy computer nerds nice. that aren't really into cars? <laughs> yeah, they're into electronics, right? Sure. And they're and they're programmers and they're and they're on the nerdy level, uh -huh. right? And I know I'm on the nerdy level, but it's like in my head, it's a different. It's it's, it's different. a different level. <laughs> it's different, right? <laughs> so like I'm a car guy. Like I'm into like you know building cars. Yeah, yeah. And then the EV guys are like over here, like they're the computer nerds, sure. right? And I mean, there's some truth to it that I haven't seen a lot of those backyard projects mm -hmm. executed to high levels. Right. You know, there is some and they're and they're and they're definitely evolving faster and faster by the day. Yeah. yeah. But like if you look back like five years, I mean, I don't want to say any names, but there's like the Honda car that was Tesla converted uh -huh. that looks like a piece of junk. And I mean... There's, and that, that's, 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 that's not built by like my kind of a car builder. Right, right. Right. And then there's some other cars that, that were like these conversions and they're just not executed on the level that I would see myself in. Sure. Right. So yeah, it's like, it's, it's very, it's very different. So then I didn't really have a lot of guys in the industry that I could communicate with because I don't know them. And then other guys like, and so BC was like literally the only one yeah. that like we do gasoline race vehicles and now we're dabbling in this other kind of foreign circle so yeah i don't remember what the question was now but that was what no, I, mean, I went on a rant with it but i i you know it's it's a good point it's a whole new group of people who are becoming car people yeah and one thing that i've noticed and am excited about is that you know EVs and gasoline is a little bit polarizing, but if you look at it from the perspective of just people who like cars, mm -hmm. there's way more in common with gasoline and EV cars yeah. than, than not. That's very true. And that's yeah. really cool. It's like, you know, I'm excited to go to the racetrack and I'd have a lot to learn about suspension. Every single person who's been racing since carbureted muscle cars mm -hmm. knows more than I do about suspension. Sure. And I'm going to be a sponge. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be talking EVs at all. Right. It's all just car stuff. It's all car stuff. Yeah, and that's started to happen a lot more. And um, yeah, for me, you know, I know a lot about those other things. And then now I'm a sponge for like all the EV stuff, yeah. you know. And I don't really like, I'm still, there's still a lot for me to learn. But I prefer to learn things like on my own. Versus like looking up things and researching all these things. I feel like that that, that, that doesn't, maybe you just, you copy and paste it mm -hmm. and you don't like actually understand why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of learn on my own, if that makes sense. Do you like go forward until you hit a roadblock and then that's when you yeah, that's when I start figure it out? Yes, and exactly. get past that one, right. keep going. Yeah, and like I've gone down roads where I'm like, this is the way I'm doing it because I think that this is right. And then when you um, um, do have to like search for help and then they see how you're doing it, they're like, whoa, you, you either it's like you came to that to that consensus on your own. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like that's that's pretty cool. Or it's like, I never thought about it. That's way off in left field. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, am I out? Am I so far away that it doesn't like it's bad? You know, <laughs> anyway, so there's good and bad when it comes comes to that. Um, but that's like the way that I kind of like prefer to do things. Sure. So. I love that. Yeah. 
So the EK build, mm -hmm. that's what's up right now. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through a little bit of a deeper dive on that? Yeah, let's do let's do that one. So the EK is kind of it's going to be everything that I I um, have learned and I feel like I've done wrong with the S two thousand. And then what I've always wanted to do to the S2000. Okay. So for example, uh, that car has a dual motor all wheel drive setup, all right? So I am using a Tesla Model S front drive unit. It's flipped around because the diff and the fitment and the way that it needs to be is pretty much, it's, it's reversed rotation. Um, so we have to do modifications for that, okay. but that's a front Tesla S motor. And then it's a rear Tesla S motor in the back. Um, to fit that, my buddy Brian from Haasport, they do a lot of Honda mount kits. If you're not familiar with Haasport, it's just a huge company doing all things mount related. You're doing a K-Swap and a Civic, like that's who you use. So I've been talking to Brian a long time about potentially doing EV. And he's like, let me know when you have the right motor for me to do it with. Cool. And so he, him and his team built a mount kit for me. So it's this bolt-in kit to mount that front drive unit that's so cool yeah and then the rear was done uh my buddy chris eimer he's a fabricator and um i i spent a lot of time figuring out how i wanted this to work like the motor cradle to fit and how it's gonna be as bolt in as possible mm -hmm. you still gotta cut stuff but you know it's like how do you fit a drive unit in the back of a front wheel drive car so we figured all that out um he designed a repeatable mount to put that Tesla drive unit in the rear. And then um, we're using a spindle setup, which is used in all wheel drive Honda conversions. So they have the differential that they'll mount and then the gasoline engine will have a drive shaft and a gasoline engine in the front. Well, I'm using that trailing arm setup because they have it set up where it's punched out. Uh, it's called S1 built and it's punched out for axles. And that's really what you need. You need to be able to mount axles in the back. So, the S1 built trailing arm setup combined with, you know, now your axles are all, all set up. Chris Eimer's mount kit setup that we made. Hasport's front mount. We have two motors now mounted in the car. Okay. Then I decided to go with an 85 kilowatt Tesla pack. Nice. And the reason why I went that large with the kilowatts is because the battery construction is the 18650 cells okay. and they're not very tall they're like they're like less than four inches and if you're going to cram batteries in a civic you either need technically you would need the back space or the front space but those are both occupied with motors mm -hmm. right so now where else do you have space like where the gas tank was i guess well there's really not i got two motors if i did like a a 16 or 18 kilowatt um uh, Pacifica pack or, uh, sorry, uh, like a Chevy Volt pack. Yeah. Yeah. It's not enough. It's not a big enough battery to drive those two motors. It's like, why do you have two motors? Right. So I needed something that had more density, more kilowatt hour, just a bigger pack in general. And that pack matches those two motors from the factory. So they're low profile. So I can actually fit eight modules underneath the seats. So the floor is cut out. There's a frame built that actually Ooh. looks a lot like when you skin open a Tesla Model S, the way they mount the little like... Skateboards. Yeah, it's a skateboard now. So they're, it's underneath the um, seats. And then I'm also having vertically stacked modules in the back where the gas tank was and then a little bit further back in the car. So I'm able to somehow, I think, hopefully cram <laughs> 85 kilowatt <laughs> Tesla pack into the Civic with dual motors um, the next probably big thing, um, uh, aside from like visual stuff, you know, like it's all civic type R style and it's going to be like, you know, it's going to look the part. Yeah. It's not going to look electric this time. It's just okay. going to be a very, um, timeless civic type R theme kind of classic, really classic Honda. Right. Um, but the one main thing that's actually like pretty complicated and involved mm -hmm. is the way I'm doing the cooling system. Okay. So as you know, but maybe not everybody that knows stuff about EVs, cooling is, is, is pretty critical and it's very complicated. Yes. And I remember, you know, like the first person that didn't know anything about EVs that saw my Civic, they're like, you have a CSF radiator in here? Like, what's that for? 
I'm like, for my cooling. Yeah. They're like, what do you got to cool? <laughs> I'm like, inverters and motors and batteries and onboard chargers. And they're like, huh? Right? Plus the cabin. Right. Yeah, you have to keep the cabin. So for the cabin, I'm going to do a, a PTC um, heater. So it's electric 400 volt heater. Cool. So that'll be my cabin heat for creature comfort. Okay. okay? And then I'm also going to have air conditioning. Air conditioning is going to be... It's going to double as creature comfort uh -huh. for the interior, for myself and my co, you know, drivers. Um, but it's also going to be part of the strategy in cooling all those components that I just spoke about. Yeah. Okay. So how this works is I'm going to simultaneously cool, heat, and have full control over the entire system with one radiator. And how I do that is with all these little check valves that they're actually off the shelf Tesla parts. There's wow. three, three way and four way valves. And these valves are basically diverting water in a different directions. And then they're, in some cases, it'll divert water through a chiller. And a chiller is a Freon based um, ex heat exchanger. Okay. So I'll have, I'll be able to have full control with my AEM system and then my, um, we have a Rywire PDM that we're using and I'll be able to control those valves based on strategy without flipping buttons or doing anything because it'll, 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 there are, thermo, there are thermistors and temperature sensors and all these things in my system that will be able to kind of self strategize, chill, heat, whatever's necessary and isolate different loops so I can cool my motor and heat my battery, or I can do vice versa, or I can keep it all into one, you know, figure eight loop, right? That's so awesome. you can isolate things, you can introduce things. Like I can block off my radiator completely and bypass it, or I can introduce it, or I can introduce that to a chiller, or I can introduce that to a heater. So it can do all the things, right? And yeah. it's set up that way because that's how OEs strategize it. Mm -hmm. And they use CAN messages, solid state relays, you know, which is like my PDM systems, okay. to send and distribute power to all the different all the different devices without without um, driver input. So I can I can request to turn on, you know, a, a Freon cooler. Or I can just let the system just do it for me. That's really cool. Yeah. So and without all of the inputs, then that's going to make the interior extra clean. Right? Yeah. You won't so have to have a big pad or something. There's like not going to be like a big screen. Um, I'm going to have a small keypad. Okay. And the keypad is going to do all my driver controls and then also like overrides for some stuff. Mm -hmm. And then also give me like a light to show that it's on. So like, and if it's overcurrenting, if it outputs overcurrenting. So for example... I don't have to press any buttons to turn a fan on because it's all, it knows what the temperature is. It's already strategizing for me. Okay. okay? It'll turn on a fan, but I want to know my fans on so I can see on the keypad, it'll go green on the keypad and that output will show that it's on. And if there's an issue, like let's say there's a dead short, something gets pinched. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Something that overcurrents that output, it'll, I'll have it programmed. So it'll go from green to yellow to red. Right. And I'll probably do it where green's on. Yellow is that there's possible faults because it's overcurrenting, but it's like trying to save it. Sure. And then red would be the output's no longer working. It's the same strategy in like Formula One cars when your fuel pump is, you know, it's all management systems with all the outputs and you can override things and change things. And it's all that high end motorsport tech, but just convert it over to like the EV platform. That's so cool. And so. eventually this is something that people might be able to come to you and mm -hmm. say, hey, I want to do this too. Yeah, like I actually build wire looms for some companies, private label, uh, that are starting to implement their own kits um, in their, their specific demographic vehicles. That's awesome. Right? Like for example, BC does a lot of 911s. Mm -hmm. And we supply all of his AEM VCU wiring harnesses. And like people don't necessarily know that, but you know that's something that, that we work on with him, and then that just betters our understanding of this whole process. Sure. So then when I come to like 
you know, doing building a system and helping design. Um, like we work with a company called APP and they do um, Cascadia motor integration. So APP has their Cascadia control and like we help them and we work with AEM to, to develop that entire package. So sweet. And you know, they're, they're moving forward with a bunch of battery tech and like a really, a lot of really cool stuff. Cascadia. Mm -hmm. So I was at Holly High Voltage last yep. year, yep. and they provided some of the uh, some of the good stuff for a race car that was there. Yeah. And I just briefly was talking to the guy, and I was like, "Man, this car is awesome! It's a kit car, custom build." Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, "Oh, the white, the little white car." Um, yeah. No, this was a gray, a gray one. Okay. Okay. Sure. So um, sorry. But anyway, he's like, "Yeah." So it's it's been going well on the track and whatnot, but we had to turn it down to sixty percent power, mm. and because uh, they have some issues, some of those yellow lights, right, going mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. and I go, okay, so what's it uh, what's it putting down? And oh, eight hundred to the wheels. Mm. That's sixty percent. Mm -hmm. like, okay, and that's when my mind goes, Cascadia. Okay, yeah. that puts two, down some two power. motors. Yeah, two I motors. So yeah, I believe so. So um, axial motors like the uh, pancake motors they ca they're called okay. a lot of times they you can actually stack those together like like rotary like oh, rotary engines okay so that's super cool because whatever you have space for like uh the maki -E, the maki -E 1400 that i was telling you about yeah yeah they're running they're running those pancake style axial motors and they got four of them lined up in the back and then they got three of them in the front four in the rear the rear tires and three in the front so that's split up and you could just i mean wherever you have space in real estate you should put more motors now the cool. problem though is the price on those things <laughs> Jeez, and you have to you have to run their fancy um really high-end inverters so every motor needs in its own inverter right you can't just have like one inverter or two inverters and then run a bunch of motors off of it you literally need the inverter has to control each motor so you get uh i mean that Cascadia stuff, they're trying to figure out ways to package it and making it a lot cheaper. Yeah. But, um, I mean, you could generally, those axial motors are like 10 to 15,000 bucks each. And then the inverters are 10 to 15,000 bucks each. So, you know, if you have seven motors, that's a lot of money. Yep. And then you need batteries and you need everything else to build the car. And then you need, uh, you need a gearbox to be able to, that, that's all, that's not all of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. you need to be able to, get that to the to the to your wheels so it's uh yeah it's the the cascadia stuff's awesome and if they can figure out ways to package it well into well they are already but they're doing like these drive units yeah that very much resemble like what tesla has mm -hmm. and that's the motor inverter and gearbox in a one package Integrated. right yeah and they're awesome but you know they're still 20 grand and the Tesla stuff is used and it's 1500, 3000 bucks. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would love to have put, I actually reached out to Cascadia, I'm not going to lie, and just see if they'll just give me some motors yeah. for my Civic. Uh -huh. They weren't really interested. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know what? I don't really want to spend like 40 grand just in like inverters and motors and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this. The budget for the car was a hundred. I'm trying to do it all for under a hundred K. Okay. Right. Um, so far, with what I have and some cool parts that aren't on the car right now, I'm at fifty-one thousand. So I'm doing pretty well. You're in budget. I'm in budget right nice. now, <laughs> and I don't need too much more to finish the car. Okay. I actually already bought all my AEM stuff. Okay. Dash, BCU. I already have all my PDM stuff. So all the electronics, onboard charger. Only thing that I still need is my BMS. You have so, batteries already too. Yeah, I have batteries. Sweet. Yeah, I have Tesla batteries already. I got a really good deal on those. It was like 16000 for the whole pack. What? So they're like $1,000 a Great. module. Yeah. So that was pretty fair because I think I've heard people spending up to $1,500 a module. Because mm -hmm. you're pretty much buying batteries based on kilowatt because everybody uses them for off-grid stuff. Uh -huh. And that just drives the prices up. Yeah. So now you're pretty much paying for, per kilowatt. So I think I got a pretty good deal. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's like, geez. It's expensive. It is. It's expensive. I, I mean, I'm over here like checking myself going, okay, wait, you can only afford Tesla motors, bro. You can't afford <laughs> Cascadia. You know, you can ask them if they'll give them to you for free, but 
you know, it's just, yeah, it's even, in, it's a lot for me to chew. So totally. Yeah. Well, I think that, that, what the way that you're doing it makes a lot of sense and it helps it's going to help to bring that price down mm -hmm. right um, yeah when you when this turns into a kit other people can do it then it will you know plus oems tesla they're making more cars there's going to be more parts available sure so hopefully you know as time goes on then mm -hmm. prices will drop and yeah. uh, builds will be in the five figures instead of the six which yeah you know heck there's people that are doing gas cars for that amount too if you know oh, what yeah. you're getting into oh yeah for sure i mean and then you have these like bespoke cars coming out you know yeah. the it's so easy to say all oh, the singers and the whatever but all these bespoke cars people are paying crazy money for them right and the right market this is how this is my train of thought like I know that 911s and BMW E30 M3s and like they all are have a lot of value to people. Mm -hmm. But I also think that like my sip, you know, my Honda crowd, my Honda community, eventually, you know, these these people that are starting to do a little bit, you know, better for themselves, but then their high school dream car was always that Integra Type R. Yes. And, you know, like that's me, right? And I think that I'm not scared to spend a hundred grand on a custom electric civic project but by me doing that i will then make this available now for the next guy for maybe half that hell yeah right totally. so and i've always been like that i spend all the money so then i but i mean it's development <laughs> it's it's development costs sure. and, and like i can you know write most of it off of my business which is, which is great yeah um but yeah like r and d in these things makes it for the community to be able to grow and do more with it so um, yeah, I'm really definitely looking in the future for the Civics to be um, a very viable platform for EV. Because I just I can't wait for the day that all these cars are on the road and they're all smog exempt. Uh -huh. And I live in California and F the police. <laughs> they pull me over and it's like, what? What, what did I do wrong? Yep. You know, yeah, my car looks like a rice rocket to you, but... Um, there's a lot of tech in it. It's totally, it's totally, um, legal. Everything mm -hmm. that we've done is California exempt from smog yep. and we can pretty much have a race car on the street if we want. It's just an electric version of a race car. So that would be a really cool day to be able to have a bunch of Hondas that are all electric and, and, and totally, um, you know, exempt from, from smog. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm doing it for performance. I'm not a tree hugger. My family is a bunch of hippies. Mm -hmm. Like literally, nice. they're all NorCal, like live in the trees, like that kind of, you know, cabins in, in Northern California and stuff. Um, so I was, grew up very, you know, very hippie. <laughs> sure. Uh, but I'm not a tree hugger. I'm from NorCal too. So yeah, I, okay. I get it. Hell in NorCal, I know yeah. Folks. <laughs> for sure. So um, I definitely am not like swayed, like my, me getting interested in electric is not for any specific reason. I'm using used batteries, so that's actually really good for the environment because mm -hmm. you're giving them a recycled another chance. Sure. So I actually, I do like that part of it. Um, and I'm using all, you know, used Tesla. I mean, I'm not, I'm not manufacturing anything that's going to actually, you know, hurt the environment but I'm really doing it for performance right. because I want to go fast. I want to like, you know, I want the acceleration. Hell I yeah. want my customers to enjoy a race a applicable car. Yeah. Um, I, that's, that's my goal is to go, is to make it a performance vehicle and use as little resources as possible is nice, you know? Yeah, totally. And that means more people can buy them too. Yeah. And have a ton of fun. Yeah. And all the, and all the cars you're talking about that are, you know, hitting the roads and then going to the scrap yards and all these EV cars, we're going to have like all these great parts, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited about that too. Yeah. So you have, you could go off the shelf and you could buy a Cascadia or you could use a used, a used leaf or volt or, or, or you know, whatever motor that, that like, you know, totally. Tesla motors and it's all, it's all very good candidates and people will develop more and more stuff for those. So. Yeah. So the EK, that's, that's like the all wheel drive. It's going to be a rocket. Mm -hmm. You have another one in the works. Yeah. The EG is going to be super tame. Um, the goal for that is to just have a front motor Okay. and it'll have a battery pack in the back. Um, probably like rear seat kind of area. I've seen a lot of a lot of people kind of doing just big battery packs in the back mm -hmm. so they don't want to cut the car up. So I kind of like have 
adopted that as a viable option is to just kind of like, you know, put the battery pack in the back, the electric motor in the front, and then I'll do the, all the wiring and electronics and, and interfacing and screens and however that needs to be done. Yeah. And, I, and I definitely want that car to be the, the kit, the first development car for, the, for a kit for a Honda Civic. And the really cool thing is that, you know, the, the EK is an EK and then the EG to DC2, they all have the same engine bay um, layout. So that mount kit that's on my EK that mount yeah. kit will go into an EG and it'll also go into a DC2 Integra. Oh, perfect. So that actually, that one solution carries over all those three platforms. And that's, that's all so the cool. like golden era Honda cars. Yeah. That's like what we want, right? So that mount kit will single-handedly work for everything. And um, making it modular with all the chassis is super important. And I want to only be able to, you know, design one or two differences i want everything to kind of just be universal fit for all those chassis yeah that's the goal that makes sense yeah and so far we did it right with that mount kit and so. it looks really good too yeah it does it's different yeah it's very that. different yeah you're putting thought uh into weight balance with the batteries yeah totally and that's one of the reasons why i really didn't love just stuffing the batteries in the trunk of the car yeah because that feels so like you know, front wheel drive car, all your weight's in the front. And now you kind of flip that on its head because now you have weight in the front, but not as much weight as an engine. Mm -hmm. And then you have, the batteries are obviously always going to be heavier than, than your, than your motor. So, um, yes, the kit might not be a perfect 50, 50 weight balance, but, um, I'm going to try very hard to make my EK as 50, 50 as possible. And with that skateboard design and putting all the weight low, um, and centralized, that'll help. That'll help a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing that the, that the, EK development could lead to is people that might want to do parallel hybrid systems. Hmm. So this is a third thing that I haven't even talked about yet, okay. but eventually I want to take my rear mount kit, combine that with an engine in the front, and then have that be a parallel hybrid. So parallel means they're working together. Uh -huh. They don't have like a motor charging a, you know, battery charging a da 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 da. It's literally one system and another system, which is the engine, and then the motor, and they're working in the same direction to the same goal, and that's to propel the car forward. That'd be cool. So that'd be really neat. And if you did an all-wheel drive setup like that, your rear wheels, instead of the front-wheel drive Honda setups with a front engine where there's drivetrain loss, mm -hmm. and it's still making more power, this would be actually adding power and simultaneously propelling the car forward with drive wheels in the rear. Yeah. So I could see that being an amazing concept, but something that's a little bit more involved mm -hmm. and something that'll have to come like once these other two cars are like done and like off of my plate. Yeah. But I definitely want to, to try to do that one day as well. Yeah, that would be cool. That'd be cool. And then you get the best of both worlds. Exactly. Uh, you get that low end torque from the EV, which would be fun. Yeah. And I'd probably design it where it'd be like a, a regen system where it would be like a curse system basically. So there wouldn't be, I mean, maybe it would be a plug in if you needed it, but I feel like it would just be like a really small battery pack to mm -hmm. keep the weight down and maybe just like a 200 volt or like a low voltage system where you could just like crank, like, you know, uh, regen and cram that battery, stuff it full and then just drain it and deplete it fast. Yeah. Like just voltage would just be going in and then just instantly coming out. Works like out. a capacitor more. Exactly. Like, yeah. So just that back and forth That'd be cool. of power. So that way it's like, um, it's not like you charge it and then you're out. Like it's always giving back and it's always giving forward. So with, I mean, we talked about a couple different kind of takes on, on this, different mm -hmm. types of swaps, different cars. What are you seeing when it comes to tuning? And how is that changing with EVs? Because obviously there's a lot of tuning and setting up that has to be done on these. Yeah, so there's, when you're talking combustion engines, there's a difference between, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> um, there's a difference between a tuner and a calibrator. Okay. Okay, so you have a tuner, you're actually adjusting 
you know, airflow in and volumetric efficiency and all these strategies with this gasoline combustion engine. With an EV, it's just not the case. You pretty much request the torque and then you try to maintain that torque mm -hmm. for the longest amount of RPM, of motor RPM, motor speed. Yeah. And then you try to prolong that torque number because it pretty much, like a graph on an internal combustion engine goes slowly up. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, um, EV system, it goes directly to the torque request yep. at one RPM, not 1,000 RPM, but one RPM. And then you want to try to maintain that torque request over however extended period of, of RPMs. Yeah. Right? And the longer that you can hold that, the faster the car is. Right? So it's really a torque-based system where there's not much tuning to it. However, there's a lot of setup and calibration mm -hmm. that needs to be done. Like I'm talking about all these three-way valves and PDMs and VCUs and battery yeah. management systems. All this info is coming over on this bus and you need to be able to control all those things yeah. but not have to think about any of it, right? So a tuner in an EV space, as far as conversions go, is going to be the guy that's setting up the PDM, the VCU, all the valves, wiring the car, and making the strategy so seamless that the driver doesn't even know all these things are happening. Yeah. So that's, for me, right now, because things could change. I, I mean, I don't know what the future has to it, because maybe you will be able to tune an EV motor eventually or something. People will figure out ways to do it, but maybe me now, um, it's more of a calibration uh, yeah. tuner versus somebody that's like, you know, oh, I'm gonna make your engine have more power and I'm gonna make the graph look like this and yeah, we're gonna yeah. turbocharge it. it. It's not like that. This is literally a torque request to band and then you're trying to maintain that torque. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's where, that that's how I see it now. I'm, I'm curious if, we're going to see things similar to how people overclock, like gaming computers. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So I could see, like, if you go in, you know, you're on a computer, they're overclocking the CPU that creates more heat. That heat need now you need water cooling or mm -hmm. liquid nitrogen or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of similar systems, like with your three-way valves and the battery, powertrain, creature comforts and needing to move that around, or like wiring, like you want to put more juice, then maybe you need thicker gauge wiring. Maybe people, yeah. maybe there'll be kits someday to, like, change the gauge of wire to be able to modify how an OEM car runs. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. If if there's more if you can make if you can have a higher torque request number and then that torque request number um demands more um more amp draw on whatever circuit, then yeah, then you might need a bigger wire. And then that leads to these like, you know, like really old school, like, oh, you change your ground wire cables out, you get more power because your ignition system doesn't have to work as hard. And there's, you know, it, it makes the efficiency of the ignition coil, um, um, you know, the, the efficiency level goes up. And then so that equals more power. I mean, these are things that, yeah, eventually people will, will find out little things like that with EV. Yeah. Um, or then there's like hacking, right? So maybe they'll be an open source for your Tesla and then you can demand a higher torque value and instantly now your car makes more power or you can, as we know, voltage equals power. So if you can get an inverter that can, that can accept a higher voltage um, from the battery pack. So if you have a 403 volt system and then you bump that up to a 460 volt system, then you can have more voltage and if your inverter can handle it, that will equal free horsepower. So yeah, I mean like putting bigger batteries in is like your the layman's way of adding more. That, that, that's, that's a strategy to add more power. Yeah, Right. bigger batteries. Yep, bigger yeah. batteries, but you have to have certain s components have to be able to support that. But um, I mean, I'm even, I've even looked in to see like how much voltage the inverters that I have can handle. Yeah. And I don't know yet, but like, I mean, I've heard from people, from like guys at like AEM, that like a Tesla inverter can handle like 460 volts. So there's, and to get 460 volts, you just add two modules because they're 24 and a half volts each. Mm -hmm. So if all the other electronics can support 460 volts, 
then if I just add two more modules, the car will go faster, but I'll add a little bit more weight, Yeah. maybe a hundred pounds. So then am I going to go a hundred pounds faster? I don't know. So there is room to change things in the future to try to make the car uh, make even more power. It's exciting. Yeah, it's super cool. So all of these, th this stuff, it's kind of new frontier. You're learning it as, as you're going. Everyone is kind of learning it. I mean, how is that going from kind of working in Hondas and seeing the, the best of the best builds and then kind of having to look at like, oh, wait, we're starting from scratch now. And there isn't a formula to, to build from. I mean, it seems like it's really exciting. I know I'm super stoked. Yeah, like um, as a whole, Hondas for the example, everybody's built them every which way you could skin a cat. You yeah. know, like there's a million ways that you could do a Honda. But then EV space is like, man, nobody really knows. Yeah. And it's it's so early. And that's and honestly, that's why I like it. I'm kind of like pretty excited about it because I'm reinventing myself as I mean, I've been doing this for um I've been doing Honda stuff since um 99 98 okay so and i'm 40 so i've been doing it for quite a while yeah and now and i'm kind of like i honestly told myself like a few years ago i really got into 911s i really like 911s and i'm like building them on the side and stuff but i was like i'm not gonna build any more hondas kind of over it i i like i've done everything i want to do with a honda right uh-huh so with this ev thing yeah, my first instinct was 911 EV. That'd yeah. be that'd be awesome to you know a, one of the many 911s that I have. Maybe one of them will be EV. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, well, why don't why don't I just do a Honda? Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, now I'm back. Uh -huh. I'm back with another hey, Honda. Those are famous last words. Holy shit! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'd say that uh, it's really rekindled like my my drive for I'm I'm excited about Hondas again. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so that's actually really neat because I bought like three Hondas in the last like few years. So, yeah, back in. Excellent. Yeah. So, do you have any advice for people who want to start learning about this stuff or start doing this stuff? Um. Well, I will say that it's kind of challenging for me, and I'm like pretty well versed with cars. <laughs> so, don't feel let down if it's just like way, way overwhelming. But like. Um, maybe take a different step approach than me and, and, you know, watch all the YouTube that you can, where people are doing a lot of stuff the wrong way, but like, you know, you learn, you gotta learn somewhere. Right. So, and there's a lot of really good, uh, forums that are, and it's funny because forums are so like years ago, Yeah. but, but, um, great info, great info on, on EV stuff in forums. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'd say YouTube and forums are really, really good. Um, but just to know like the basics, AMEV has um, uh, booklets of information and they have videos and they have a lot of resource on how these systems work together. Like what's an onboard charger? What's a DC to DC? Why would you need DC when you already have DC? Like what is that about? And like, oh, okay, you learn though that makes a lot more sense, yeah. right? So you need to know, I remember looking, okay, like BC, what components do you have on your car? Like, what do you even need to do this, right? And so I guess find a mentor if you can. Mm -hmm. He's been a mentor, but then it's funny because I'm also a mentor to him because we're doing things a little differently and then we bounce ideas. Yeah. So try to find somebody that's, that, that, that is doing uh, something with you, maybe different, but also doing it that you can talk to. Cool. So that's probably the main ones that I would do. Right on. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really yeah. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming, dude. This was like an uh, awesome evening and uh, cool. super exciting. Cool. Thank you. Right on.